It's been a month since our last SpaceX in the news episode, so here's a brief update on where things stand. A launch date for Starship's fourth test flight, expected to occur in May, is still pending. But in the meantime, SpaceX is getting out ahead of Test Flight 5 by revving up its Starship's six Raptor engines during a static fire just a couple days ago. The big news of late, however, involves Dragon, specifically the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission. SpaceX and the Polaris astronauts held a Spaces event on X on Saturday. I'm excited to announce that Polaris Dawn is the next major operation for the Dragon program. The Dragon spacecraft for this flight is currently in Florida. It's going through its pre-launch processing phase and, and the hardware is moving forward and on track for that early summer launch. Here are the highlights of the briefing, starting with the objectives of the crewed mission. Our first objective is to travel farther from the Earth than uh, the last time humans walked on the moon with Apollo 17 more than 50 years ago. We uh, target an apogee of 1,400 kilometers. Uh, that puts us just inside the, uh, the Van Allen radiation belt. It's an awesome opportunity for us to get some data, um, but really it's, uh, it's about kind of pushing beyond our, our comfort zone. After um, uh, about seven, seven or so laps uh, at our uh, peak apogee, we'll come down to about 700 kilometers and we'll vent the cabin down to vacuum. Uh, and then we will undertake an EVA operation where we hope to learn an awful lot about our suits and the operation associated with it because it's the first commercial EVA. It's the first time you don't have you know, government astronauts undertaking such a mission. And that's important because we are going to get to the moon or Mars someday. We're going to have to get out of our vehicles, out of the safety of a habitat and explore and build and repair things. And that means the knowledge uh, for spacewalks and, and EVAs has to go beyond just the, the few that it exists with today. Uh, third, we're going to test out uh, laser-based communication over Starlink. And that also is about the future of human spaceflight and reducing dependencies on you know, legacy ground stations or, or you know, overburdened Tejas satellites. Some more info on the flight perimeters. We will be launching into a highly elliptical orbit where our perigee is at about 190 kilometers, but our apogee is at about 1200 kilometers. We will then, after a number of orbits, be raising our apogee up to about 1400 kilometers. After a number of orbits there, we will we'll complete all the research that we were intending to, do, intending to do, and then we will lower our apogee back down to a nice coasting orbit around 700 kilometers, where we will complete the rest of our mission objectives, including the spacewalk. More details concerning the EVA objective. The suits themselves are fed by the vehicle, so all of our life support is going to be coming from the vehicle. Oxygen tanks inside the spacecraft fed through an umbilical to our suits. Um, the umbilicals provide our electronics, our life support, that is really our connection to the vehicle. Um, in order to both account for the full mission duration and make sure we can test this out, the operation is gonna be scoped to about two hours end to end. Um, and that includes venting the capsule, external operations, and then repressurizing the capsule as well. Um, outside the spacecraft, two crew members will go through the kind of like a test matrix effectively to get SpaceX the data that they're hoping to see. And this is looking at mobility, movement in this microgravity environment, how the suit is performing. Um, there's a kind of a whole series of test questions that will be stepped through uh, for the time outside the spacecraft. And tons of intel for the new EVA suit that was developed for the mission. We're, we're using a single suit on the Flareston mission, so the crew will be wearing it out to the pad all the way through splashdown. So we wanted to make sure that everything the current IVA suit could do, we maintain that functionality, but then also made it EVA capable as well. Um, we've done a lot of work on joints across the suit to make the suit more mobile. Uh, another big element was the thermal side of the suit. So obviously much larger thermal extremes that the suit will see when it goes outside of Dragon versus what it sees inside. Um, so there was a lot of work on both the materials of the suit, uh, developing a whole new layer that we needed to add for thermal management, as well as looking at the thermal uh, condition for the crew members themselves and making sure that they were at a comfortable temperature uh, inside the suit. And one thing that we added to their umbilical was a cooling knob that they'll be able to uh, turn on or off. Another big element was uh, some added functionality in the helmet. Um, Jared and Sarah will have cameras in their helmet. So we'll have a kind of first person view of what they're seeing through their visor throughout the EVA. And then all the crew members have a HUD, a heads up display in their helmet as well, which is displaying the real time pressure, temperature and humidity inside their suit, as well as a timer so they can keep track of the time of the overall EVA. 
And that's all for episode 416. The next time I see you on this channel may very well be live for the launch of TF4 or Polaris. We'll see. Until that time, make your weekends nominal and Godspeed.